most of the product offering is contained within the Chicago uh, bank, um, but each specific regional uh, federal home loan bank will allow for or or will will allow for the MPF program or not allow for the MPF program. So it depends on what the region is. Uh, based on this slide here, we're going to talk about a little bit about secondary markets um, and, and why the uh, Federal Home Loan Bank generated this, this product. Federal Home Loan Bank, um, you know, for its inception, was created to allow for portfolio mortgages to be borrowed against. Um, so in, in our world, we refer to that as the banking side, and then the, the MPF side is, is the mortgage um, origination servicing side. Um, Fannie, Freddie are tough. Um, you know, they want volume, they want consistent volume uh, on, on large numbers. Um, it's, a, it's a hell of an approval uh, for Fannie and Freddie having gone through uh, the Fannie Mae approval. And uh, the MPF is, is a much easier path in order to acquire servicing rights. And that is really the main component behind the Federal Home Loan Bank product. It is a servicing right conduit. So you're able to sell a loan through to the Federal Home Loan Bank as a secondary market conduit and acquire the servicing rights via a credit enhancement or CE fee. And that CE fee is determined based on the risk associated with the transaction. When we first started, the CE was a very, um, it was a very large component of whether or not a loan should push through to the Federal Home Loan Bank. Um, over the years, the CE has has it, it's it's become less relevant in decision making because it evens out over a period of time. So any type of a credit enhancement fee, um, and, and John will touch on the particulars as it relates to uh, uh, the the accounting and booking of those. But CE fees can can range anywhere from five, six, seven percent all the way down to zero percent. So um, we, we've allowed for the portfolio to take time to let that even out so that you can get a general idea. Risk is, you know, risk, risk is going to happen on a mortgage loan. Um, a saying that I've heard over the years is uh, the, only, the only good loan is a paid off loan, you know, as far as the risk associated with it. So, um, you know, the Federal Home Loan Bank does a great job of determining what that is. Um, Secondary markets in the slide uh, designed to help credit unions gain access to secondary markets, free MPF uh, credit unions forced to portfolio mortgage loans, or look to acquire an approval for Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Uh, members that obviously are looking for 15 to 30 or fixed conventional mortgages uh, are the main, the main focal point as far as the Federal Home Loan Bank is concerned. The impact to interest rates, liquidity, and prepayment risk. Um, Two different two different kind of sides to that coin. Um, when you have a portfolio loan, obviously concentration risk, interest rate risk, uh, liquidity today uh, being the, the the main driver of being able to find a source for uh, a, a company to be able to purchase the uh, the asset portion, the dollar portion of the mortgage loan, is an important piece. Um, liquidity is tough right now, and for different reasons outside of the regionals. Credit unions are dealing with, in my mind, uh, a lack of pay down in, in their existing portfolios, be it credit cards or home equity lines. You know, we typically see and, and we focused over the years on net loan growth, not gross loan growth. And um, net loan growth right now is, is skewed definitely uh, to the high side because you're not seeing pay downs in your, uh, in your, in your normal portfolios that you would typically see. The MPF traditional. Um, so you'll hear two different, uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah, thank you. The MPF traditional, um, commonly referred to as TRAD. Uh, prior slide. Mm -hmm. Thanks, right. Thank you, sir. Um, these are the two main programs, the middle box MPF traditional, uh, as we refer to as TRAD, and then uh, MPF extra. Traditional is the interest rate risk, liquidity, and prepayment risk that the Federal Home Loan Bank is taking on. Uh, the credit union shares in the credit risk um, and earns a, a, a recapture of the credit enhancement fee. And again, I'll, I'll defer to John as far as the accounting functionality associated with that. Um, rights can be associated, or I'm sorry, can be retained and associated with the, uh, the member 
So as a use of a subservicer or an internal servicing program to allow for your member to see your name on an ongoing consistent basis. The interesting part with the TRAD program is there are no lender, uh, loan, I'm sorry, loan level price adjustments. LLPA is typically seen with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and recently here last couple of months in the media um, with some tweaks associated with what the cost is for any given mortgage loan based on credit score and loan to value uh, to be sold into the secondary market, typical secondary market conduits. The Federal Home Loan Bank does not have those adjustments. So the LLPA is associated with a loan that you're selling through to a, a secondary investor today. Um, the MPF does not carry those LLPAs. The extra program, um, <clears throat> we were uh, um, we were around when when this hit, and this had to do with the monstrous levels of liquidity. I'm, I'm sorry, monstrous levels of volume in mortgage loans um, that credit unions saw in 2012, um, where interest rates were were very low. Uh, you know, down into the uh, the the mid threes as far as 30 year fixed rate mortgages were concerned. Well, the Federal Home Loan Bank, because of that volume, um, they needed a conduit for themselves. Um, and so they partnered up with Fannie Mae. And basically the extra program is allowing credit unions access to Fannie Mae via the MPF product. So no risk sharing, um, you can maintain servicing uh, or sell the servicing for a, uh, for a premium. And those are the two main products. So if you hear a trad comment or an extra comment, it's based on these two, uh, these two different components. Typically, the credit unions that we see traditional is the, is the main component. They'll have uh, additional accessibility uh, through to other, other entities that can touch through to Fannie Mae. Next slide, please. Well, uh, real quick, I'm sorry, Brad, I just wanna jump in sure. on that. I think from a credit union perspective, Bryce, if you could jump back. Um, you know, what I looked at when I was at the credit union, I was working with Pivot to, to get this program set up and, and Brian touched on this, but it really comes down to capacity and risk, right? So I didn't have the capacity on my balance sheet to, to manage a huge mortgage portfolio and, and maintain the volume that I needed to maintain for my membership. So this gives you an outlet, you know, for that, you know, to, to, to keep that, that flow of loan coming, even if you don't have the capacity to port on your own. Um, that's one key component. And then the other he touched on is that, that transfer of risk, right? So in the TRAD program, which is definitely what you know, we would recommend you kind of dip your toe in the water with, with the traditional program, you're transferring that risk, right? That interest rate risk of liquidity, you're taking all that off your balance sheet uh, with the exception of credit risk. As Bryce said, I mean, any, every, every mortgage loan has some, you know, some level of credit risk. You're sharing in that credit risk with FHLB where they're taking on the interest rate risk and liquidity risk being the two key that they're taking away from you, right? But again, for that, you, you earn that for maintaining that sharing, I guess, that credit risk, right? You're, you're earning income on that through that through that CE fee. Um, so it's really kind of the best of both worlds. Um, and uh, you know it's that's really I think from a from a credit union perspective, especially if you're you know smaller in asset size, uh, really the direction that I would you know typically recommend and, and, and as Brian mentioned, we'll get into the, the key component of this, which is the the ability to book these mortgage servicing rights. Sorry, Bryce, go ahead. Thanks, John. Yeah, the, you know, the, the interesting part when it comes to an approval with the Federal Home Loan Bank is, is it needed? Um, you know, with, with the group that we have, uh, we may have some smaller financial institutions that may not want to go through the approval process or have the capacity to be able to go through the approval process. And it, as I was driving in this morning, I thought, you know, the, the, the main focal point here, um, if, if you're already in the process of getting approved um, or, or have your approval, we can use those approvals through a third party origination agreement with some of the smaller financial institutions so that they don't have to go through the approval process, but can still be a part of the program as far as offering that up to the membership. So um, it's a it's a it's a secondary market conduit. You know, they, they have regulators, obviously, and and 
you know, it, it's it's not easy to get approved through the MPF, uh, although it is easier than uh, the Fannie Mae Freddie Mac approval. Next slide, right? Approved PFI, primary financial institution, be a member of your local regional FHLB. So it requires you to fund an account and purchase FHLB stock, allows access to a full suite of FHLB services. And again, this is more on the banking side. You know, what, what do they offer? Um, I, I would uh, assume that there is a relationship with the majority of the folks on the call as far as a member, uh, being a member of your local federal home loan bank. Um, but if you are not, uh, uh, you can just you can just uh, a simple Google search with regard to who your regional is. Work through the application process. The Federal Home Loan Bank wants to see ability, experience, staffing. Um, they, they they want to know that you're able to close a mortgage loan outside of the Federal Home Loan Bank. Um, typically, that comes in the form of a broker relationship or a correspondent relationship with a third party. Uh, mortgage aggregator that is then taking your originations and putting them into the secondary market. And the Federal Home Loan Bank is looking for that experience, for that ability to be able to close a mortgage loan that is saleable into the secondary market. Uh, policies and procedures. I'm uh, 51. Ten years ago, I would have said check a box as far as policy and procedures. Any more, they're important. And, uh, you know, identifying that and understanding what's contained within the policy and procedures. Um, it's taken me a bit of time in my life to, to get past that check, a uh, check the box scenario, uh, simply because, you know, we have the, we have the uh, appropriate approach to it, but policies and procedures are important. Um, and they're, they're easily implemented and created because volume is low right now. Uh, very complicated to uh, implement once you have, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the refinance activity that will inevitably come back into play. Um, when that volume comes in, you're focused on closing the loan and making sure your locks aren't blown and you know all the different components that are associated with uh, running a, a mortgage entity. Um, so it's a good time as far as policy and procedures to take a look at them if you have them internally currently uh, to take a look at them and you know see if see if they're appropriate. Uh, they go stale pretty quick and uh, you know an, an annual review of policy and procedure I think is an important component. Exact criteria for approval varies from uh, credit union to community bank to you know, all the different components that are allowed for with the Federal Home Loan Bank. There is a, I don't know exactly where, it's in Washington, so um, it, it, could, it, could, it could pop up next week or five years from now, uh, but there's a movement here uh, to allow for non-federally insured financial institutions, i.e. mortgage brokers, bankers, to access the Federal Home Loan Bank for mortgage services. Um, they've been talking about that for a couple of years. I did see that there was something as far as either with the House or, or the Senate um, uh, to take a look at that as far as opportunity. Normal loaf, uh, I'm sorry, normal loan life cycle. Um, yeah, I think it's important, you know, for the folks that are, uh, that are approved, that are going through the approval, um, or potentially some of the smaller financial institutions to understand exactly what it takes to acquire a mortgage loan through the Federal Home Loan Bank and, and how to get it closed. So um, their site is, is pretty intuitive as far as initial loan presentment, which will uh, identify what the credit enhancement fee is and then how, what the delivery looks like as far as the uh, after a commitment is obtained, uh, pricing is in motion and the loan is closed. Um, so uh, kind of going through that and having an understanding, um, we have uh, um, a good amount of expertise with regard to that piece. At this point, I will, uh, with the next slide, Bryce, I will hand it over to uh, John Ferris. Uh, John and I are, whew, it's, been, it's been decades or a decade plus at this point as far as our relationship. Uh, as John had stated, um, we, we were uh, a partner with Columbine. Uh, to help them facilitate their approval through to the MPF traditional program. Um, John being the CEO at the time. Uh, John came over here about three years ago to pivot uh, just to expand that um, and, and be able to touch more uh, financial institutions through the day to day. Um, it's exciting stuff for him and I to be able to have this conversation um, because this, this is a key component to help a financial institution 
move into the mortgage origination space, which in my mind, you know, there's all types of subservicing entities. Um, there's all types of sub origination entities uh, that exist via QSO, via standalone private companies. Um, I think having a, a good understanding on an internal basis is a positive thing for the future growth of the movement um, to have credit unions be more involved in the mortgage origination side, um, to see the, the pros and the cons that are associated with it. Um, but John and I, uh, John and I have worked together for many a year, and um, it, we we enjoy definitely talking about uh, the uh, federal home loan bank program. Mr. Ferris, absolutely. Thanks, sir. Uh, and just a couple things on the application process as well. And I apologize for keeping the slide pretty vague, but it really does vary from FHLB bank to to bank, right? If you're going through with if you're partnering with FHLB Topeka versus Chicago. Um, they they all kind of have different different things that they like to see. Um, they will well at least when I worked with FHLB Topeka, um, they are kind of want to see policies and procedures. They will help you with that though. At least the the, the, the rep that we had through at the time provided us some you know, some best practices because I, I definitely had to beef up uh, some of my policies and get board approval and what have you uh, prior to any type of approval. Um, uh, you know, so they, they'll help you walk through that process, though. Uh, it's usually you know, a pretty good group on the NPF side, no matter which you know bank you're you happen to be working with. Um, and if you're the question what um, what uh, offerings the your bank in your region has, uh, you can find that on the FHLB website. You can pull up each individual bank, and it'll list out whether they just offer the traditional or if they offer traditional plus extra. Because uh, because that really also varies from from bank to bank um, as well, or if they offer it all, right? If you're in California and you're with FHLB San Francisco, uh, you, you're out of luck because they don't uh, they don't offer NPF anymore, right? But I think everybody on this call, uh, just based on who I saw early on, I kind of looked at the, uh, at their website. I think everybody has access to the to the program. Uh, so with that, just uh, want to jump into to, to the concept of mortgage servicing rights. Um, as Bryce said, I mean, this is really the big benefit of, of working with the NPF program, right? So it, it, it's basically the credit union choosing to maintain servicing. Now, you don't have to necessarily service the loan yourself. Uh, you can outsource to a subservicer. Um, you know, for us, Pivot Servicing Group, you know, we are a subservicer for credit unions, both on, you know, portfolio loans and FHLB loans. Um, but there's, you know, there's QSOs out there. Uh, I'm not trying to plug pivot servicing by any means. There's there's certainly QSOs in your area that can can help you uh, with subservicing. Typically, the same group that you're using for your port loans, you know, would be able to help you with these FHLB loans as well. Um, but for maintaining that servicing, and in the eyes of FHLB, whether or not you outsource it or not, you're the one maintaining that servicing. Um, for maintaining that, you you get 25 basis points annually. Um, as a as a servicing fee from FHLB, so that in itself is a is a nice little kick uh, in in income, right? And then the big piece then is that you're able to book these MSRs as an asset on the balance sheet. So mortgage servicing rights is is really an intangible asset, um, but that, that you'll show on your balance sheet, you'll flow through your income statement, and we'll kind of get into that. Um, but the you know key benefits of that, not only the income component, but it really does create a natural hedge for you um, in that it works in opposite of prepayment speeds, right? So in an increasing rate environment, like we've seen recently, prepayment speeds slow down. And when those speeds slow down, the MSRs, the mortgage servicing rights actually become more valuable, right? Because the amortization slows down on those. Um, and so that helps you know, offset that that prepayment speed risk, and then vice versa. Though, when when you know rates are on a decline and prepayment speeds increase, your MSRs are gonna are gonna decrease in value, but at the same time, you're gonna have more opportunity to put new MSRs on the books, and so you're gonna be turning those over more, and and hopefully that more than offsets any type of increased amortization expense on the existing MSRs. Right, so it does really kind of help create a natural hedge for the balance sheet. 
Brett, if you can jump to the next. I apologize. I'm not one usually to put a ton of words on a slide, uh, but I was trying to get you know the, the bare bones on here. Uh, but really, here you know, kind of the process to go through, right? So first, you look at a new loan. So if you have a new loan that you've sold to FHLB that you've decided to maintain the servicing rights on, you can book that loan. You book the fair value of that MSR. On the as an asset on the balance sheet with an offsetting entry to income. Typically, that entry to income is it's a non-interest income. Obviously, it's you know, typically somewhere in the fee income area of your income statement. But the key is that you're going to book the entire fair value of that MSR at the time that that in the month that that mortgage loan was sold to FHOB. Um, so that can be a pretty significant dollar amount rolling through your income statement and then ultimately to your to your balance sheet right so the, the big question is how do you how do you value that right where do you come up with fair value um, there's a lot of assumptions that can be used for that um, you know it's typically the most basic is the fair value of you know, of, you know of, uh, future cash flows um, it's you know based on assumptions like prepayment speeds and discount rates uh, servicing costs uh, you know, they, you know, a lot of times we'll factor in um, uh, delinquency rates uh, in, in your area. Um, so it's, it, it all comes down to, again, the present value of, of those future cash flows. Um, I really recommend, and that's where I get into the bottom of the slide, uh, using a third party to help in this valuation. Um, they're going to help you identify the assumptions that you're going to use and, and, and help you try to maintain those assumptions. Um, because if you, you, you once you have established those, you really want to stick with the same assumptions that you've used loan after loan after loan to avoid any type of um, significant volatil volatility um, on these servicing rights, right? Because if you change one assumption, let's say you, you know, change, you significantly change the prepayment speed assumption that you're using on these MSRs, that's going to have a significant impact on new, new uh, MSRs going on your books one way or the other, it could be good, could be bad, right? Um, and so you really want to establish these assumptions and how you're gonna how you're gonna maintain or um, create that fair value, um, establish that fair value, and just stick with it. And then in subsequent months, um, that that MSR then is advertised amortized over the the useful life, the estimated life of the related mortgage loan. Um, so you're going to create that useful life and, and amortize out over that. And again, that's going to be based on prepayment speeds, and it, it can be a moving target if you know if rates were to, to change in, in certain rate environments. Uh, you know, if prepayment speeds were accelerated, then your amortization is going to have to be accelerated, and, and vice versa. So that's an expense to the income statement, right? So you're going to flow that. From the income, you know, through the income statement as an amortization expense, and that offset then obviously is going to reduce the value on your balance sheet of those existing MSRs. When you get to this point, then it, it becomes important that you continue to put new loans, you know, sell new loans through to FHLB because you need the the income piece of booking that entire fair value. Um, on your balance sheet, you need you need that income component to to more than offset obviously the amortization expense of any existing MSRs that you have on the books. Um, where I've seen credit unions get a bit challenged is um, if, if the flow were to stop, right? You don't put uh, any you don't sell any new loans to FHLB this month, then you just have pure expense running through your income statement in, in the form of amortization expense on existing MSRs. Um, so it's really one of those things, once you start, you, you really need to continue uh, to, to avoid that type of impact on the income statement. And again, you know, it can be tricky, and, and I really do encourage credit unions to use a third party. It's not a very expensive service. Um, I, you know, I probably shouldn't plug anybody, but, you know, I used uh, Willary Wynn. Um, you know, this is, you know, a few years ago, but back in the day, I want to say I paid maybe 200 bucks a month or something like that. I mean, it's pretty minimal. Um, and, and what the service that they would provide then is that initial valuation of the MSRs, as well as the 
amortization expense for any existing MSRs that I was carrying on my balance sheet. So every month they'll produce a report and say, here's the entries that your accounting team needs to make. You need to value these new ones at this, and you need to amortize existing at this. Now, regardless of whether or not you use a third party on a monthly basis, uh, you do need to employ a third party on an annual basis because you are required to have uh, an overall valuation of your entire MSR portfolio done on an annual basis. Um, and so, and that, you know, if you're consistent with your, with your assumptions and you're, and you're actively amortizing as you should, then in, in most markets, most rate environments, um, your annual shouldn't have a huge impact on you. Um, but in some situations, if there's you know, a huge swing in markets over you know, a 12-month period and you're not actively um, you know, maintaining those, those existing MSRs appropriately, um, there can be some pretty significant swings uh, that flow through your income statement uh, you know, to shore up your, your balance sheet one way or the other. Right? And, and that's not a negative thing. It can also be uh, a positive. You know, if you're if you're showing the value of your MSRs at X, and um, you know prepayment fees have significantly slowed down over the year, but you've been actively amortizing at a heavier rate, then that annual review of your portfolio might come back and say, hey, you need to make a pretty substantial adjustment to the you know to the positive uh, in terms of income through your income statement. Uh, so I've seen it go both directions, um, but I guess I'm not one for a lot of volatility. Uh, on, on the balance sheet, uh, and again, that's one of the reasons I use use the third party because it helps kind of keep you moving along each month. So when you do do that annual, you know, hopefully there's not a significant move, you know, one way or the other. Jump on that, Bryce. No, oh, I guess that's it. So that's that's really kind of the the quick the quick lowdown on on mortgage servicing rights um you know they're once you've you know handled a few of them and you've sold you know a few loans through fhlb and you've got comfortable with you know how to book that initial fair value um through the income statement and then and then subsequent months booking those amortizations it's it's really relatively simple it's just the, the key is really getting that fair value uh established right out of the gate man so you don't have so you're not you're not overestimating, and that's what I always warn credit unions about. You don't want to you don't want to get too overzealous on that fair value, and then have a huge impairment at the end of the year. Um, you know that's a tough conversation to have with your board. Uh, so, but you know, on the flip side, you know MSRs are you know huge benefits to the credit union. Um, NCOA examiners, I, I feel like are are getting more comfortable with them, and you know, depending on your region. Um, out here, you know, we had a time where there was a lot of education um, that was required. Um, you know, I would talk to them, to the examiners. You know, so in some cases, you know, we've had to bring Brian a few times to help, help you know, with the battle. But through the years, they, uh, you know, got more comfortable with with seeing those on on the balance sheet and, and the entries, and, um, and, and you know, and, and never really pushed back on them. Um, so there might be, you know, an education piece. The first, you know, the first exam that you have when you when you have those, and I, I think, you know, as, as Brian alluded to early on, it comes to, you know, experience, staffing, education. I mean, if, if the NCUA feels like you understand what you're doing and why you're booking these and, and how you're booking them and the assumptions that's involved in, in doing so, uh, then they're they're not going to push back on you on these. At that point, I'll uh, I'll turn it over to uh, to Brian. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, last couple of pieces for me. Um, pricing is always interesting with any investor. Uh, you know, obviously, the federal home loan bank system is looking to create their path of where they're selling those loans or, or um, add additional resources for their ability to hold those loans. Um, so pricing is always a you know, it's always a concern, no matter who you're selling to. It's if it's Fannie or Freddie or Federal Home Loan Bank, Amero Home Flex, or whoever it is. Um, you know, and, it, and in my mind, it's good to have a couple of different options. The non-use of the LLPAs is definitely a benefit. 
but you're trading the LLPA for the credit enhancement. So it's 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 kind of a balancing act on that. And and again, the CEs are are more um, to, to be leveled out. It shouldn't be. It sh you shouldn't not send a loan through to the federal home loan bank because of a credit enhancement uh, because of how high a credit enhancement is. Um, but we certainly don't want you know every loan with a very high credit enhancement. Uh, fee being paid uh, or being uh, accrued on the federal home loan bank side, um, you know, across the entire portfolio. So, you know, it's a good tool. It's a good tool for the toolbox. Um, you know, they're certainly not going to be one and done. Um, acquiring the mortgage servicing rights is obviously a huge benefit, um, but you also want to make sure that you have, uh, you know, with, with any other given loan product, uh, the federal home loan bank doesn't offer adjustable rate mortgages as an example. Um, adjustable rates are pretty popular uh, simply because of the, the current interest rate environment. Um, but the farm products are typically a portfolio. So, you know, it's, it's, it's again, it's a balancing act of where your liquidity is, what your uh, strategies are as far as portfolio versus sold into secondary, and then adding a, a third component, which is sold into secondary with MSRs associated with it. So um, and what, what we wanted to, oh, go ahead, John. Sorry, one quick point of clarification on that. So, so MSRs and, and CE, the credit enhancement, they're you know, two different components, right? But the, I just wanted to point out that the CE, the credit enhancement, does never actually touches the credit union's uh, financials. Uh, you don't see that necessarily on your balance sheet. There'll be a CE maintained for you at, at FHLB, as, as Brian just mentioned. It's it's, it's a you know continues to grow as you uh, you know earn that fee, and then it's um, you know, as you sell loans through FHLB, right? And then, they, you know, the you know, worst case happens and, and, and one of these loans has to be foreclosed on, um, then there's an order, there's kind of a, a priority, a pecking order of, of what gets hit first, right? So if, uh, if FHLB has to, for, you know, ultimately foreclose on a loan, um, obviously the, you know, equity is absorbed first and then after any equity is absorbed then the hit goes to that ce and so as long as you've got adequate ce built up um there's you know it wouldn't necessarily be a, a direct hit to the to the credit union but that's really again that credit union sharing in the credit risk associated with with the loan um i would tell you that in all the years that i was doing it in columbine i never had a direct expense to the credit union associated with any type of loss on an FHLB loan, um, any you know any losses were pretty minor, and they were all absorbed between equity and, and existing CE. As described at the beginning, we wanted to do a uh, pack as much information into the shortest period as possible to prompt questions. Um, we know that there's a a, diver, a very diverse group. Um, as far as credit unions on this call with regard to thinking about getting approved, are approved, or in the process of getting approved. So we wanted to, again, just stimulate some conversation, um, any commentary, any questions that you folks may have with regard to specific components that you're engaged with right now that might be beneficial to the group. So with that, um, we can use either the chat or um, I, I think with... Uh, the, the size of the participants, I don't think we'll, we'll stumble too much as far as uh, actual voice questions, but if anyone has any comments or questions or feedback with regard to the approval process that you've gone through, um, some, some experience uh, that might help the group. Yeah, at this point, you can utilize the chat function, uh, and I will also, just based on the group, I will uh, unmute everybody, uh, and if you have a question, feel free to ask. And for the member close partners that are on here, and I apologize, I should have uh, included this in with the introductions. Pivot Lending um, Group, Bryant is the CEO owner of Pivot Lending Group. John Ferris is the CFO of Pivot Lending. They both wear hats with member close because Pivot Lending jointly owns member close with the CCUA. So that's something that's new and happening. Uh, so if you're wondering why there's some pivot <laughs> paraphernalia floating around, and we reference that, not to be confused, but that's uh, a, a new uh, partnership over the last few years for clarification. 
Okay. Well, um, no questions. Bryce, what do you say? I appreciate everybody's time uh, this afternoon. Happy first day of summer. And any questions, please don't hesitate to reach us, reach out to us um, and contact us, uh, you know, whether it's to throw a question by us, uh, have, you know, anything that you need in, in your process, beginning, middle, end, uh, any questions uh, to ask, you know, we're here to help educate and, and help you move forward. So appreciate your time today. Thank yep. you very much. Yep. Thanks, everybody.